We have to be prepared. We have to increase our competitiveness. If RCN is not going to open it, WTO will. If RCN and WTO could not open any market, globalization will. The forces of globalization are not going to respect legal boundaries. That's why our textile, our garment industry are now moving to Mesot, to Aranya Prateh, to along the borders where cheaper labor can come in, work and go back in the evening or go back during the weekend. Forces of globalization. Nobody is going to be immune and protected from the forces of globalization. Business will go where cost of production is lowest, most competitive. So, the connectivity concept of ASEAN is one infrastructural connectivity. We need rail, we need roads, we need shipping, we need transport, we need air transport, we need this telecommunication to connect us through infrastructure to unleash the potentiality that we each have in our own economy. Without that linkage, it's impossible to grow further, trapped in the middle income trap. And then, how do you move goods and services or access to services and capital and investment how can you move if we don't have institutional connectivity? Meaning, laws, regulations, rules, customs, immigration. <laughs> you have to synchronize all this, what we call institutional connectivity. And when we do infrastructural, institutional connectivity, we need people's connectivity. We need people to move cross borders. There won't be an economic community if people, particularly the professionals, cannot move cross borders. But as a diverse region, we can't say free movement of people. Because if we use the word free movement of people among us, Thailand, Kaidang, in the middle, will be flooded by migrant workers seeking better opportunity and better income, better jobs. As is, we have about 3 million workers, guest workers, in our economy. And Madame Aung San Suu Kyi told me yesterday, <laughs> Two million, only 800,000 registered with some form of welfare and protection. 1.2 million Myanmar, Burmese have not been registered. And she has raised that with the government and she would like to see all of them being registered. And she said we would like to take them back when we create our vibrant economy. Can't blame her. And just imagine what will happen to our 
ซีฟู้ดโปรเซสซิ่งอินดัสทรีในสมุทรสาคร Half of the population of that province are Myanmar. I was the one who asked the, a fund from the UN, Human Security Fund. Give it to UNICEF. Give it to WHO to provide basic health care to these workers. Myanmar, who don't speak Thai, who can only know how to do this. But if they all move out of our economy, we will be in trouble for sure. Because that level of employment, Thais don't want to do anymore. So, free movement of people, as the European Union uses, we can't. We only say free movement of skilled labor. And. We will have to open up for each other too. So, people of the stock exchange of Thailand, FedGo, combine market cap of all ASEAN stock markets. Seven, but in. Six countries. Why seven? Because Hanoi has one and Ho Chi Minh City has one. Almost equal to ASEAN GDP combined. Total market cap of all seven, Rauriakwa ASEAN exchange, 1.8 trillion US dollars. And that is a gold mine. For us to raise fund, for us to mobilize capital, again, trade, investment from each other will not increase until we can connect the financial sector together, where they have created that ASEAN exchange, but it is still in an early stage. But it is a gold mine. It is a potentiality for all of you to move out and increase your 294 billion, 300 billion worth U.S. dollars here, and synergize and take the synergy from the rest of the ASEAN stock exchanges. The opportunity is there. The challenges are there. The benefits are there, and the problems, the requirement for competitiveness, for you to go out and negotiate, persuade, explore, do due diligence. I have seen only one or two nationalities moving into uh, from every capital. As I said, dark suit, younger than 30, 35, men and women, with laptop, with iPad, sitting at breakfast tables in every five-star hotel across the region. I don't see too many young Thais. I've met them on on board. I'm working for Boston consulting firm. I'm working for. Baker and McKenzie. I'm working for other consulting firms from outside, global. Very, very rarely, I would meet people or young people, men and women from Thai companies. We have to change that, and this is a call to action. 